Hi everybody and welcome to this very short video testimonial with my lovely client Beverly Bramwell from beverlybramwell.com. I wanted to invite Beverly to come and speak with, uh, with you all today because I know that sometimes just hearing from me doesn't always ring true for some of you. Some of you want to hear from women who I've worked with and from women who have actually uh, experience this type of work together and what the effects have been in their life. So I thought Beverly would be a brilliant example today. Welcome Beverly. Hi Grace, hello everyone. <laughs> so my darling, what could you share with those that are listening around just, you know, your experience of looking in this direction together more deeply? Gosh, um... I think we ha well, one may have set ideas about what coaching is and how you'll be directed in a way. And that's not what happens working with Grace. Grace will say something and it may not even land at that moment, but something else will happen. And all of a sudden you're doing it and you realize Grace has given me permission to have that wisdom, excuse me. <coughs> And she doesn't say, I'm now going to show you wisdom and I'm now going to show you this. But it just happens. And just that way that Grace has of working, but all of a sudden you start seeing things that previously seemed to be hidden. And yet when you see them, you think, oh gosh, what's that there? And my last session working with Grace, we were talking about something that I was going to do. And I'd already written this presentation for this client and I got home, not intending to do anything more than just look at it. And I looked at it and I read the instructions again and I thought, what is this? This isn't it. So yeah, I could have got into a great panic and got carried away, but actually all I did was just rewrite the presentation. It took me a quarter of an hour and it was on, it was done. The first time it taken me, I don't know, the best part of two hours, and it really wasn't done. But yeah, I looked at it in that moment of clarity, and there it was. Now, Grace didn't say, go home, look at your presentation, and you'll have clarity. I just had this feeling when I got in, before doing anything else, have a quick look at this. And I did. And I saw something, and I thought, great, okay. And I worked on it, and that was it. And I'm not exaggerating, it took me no time at all. So I yeah. got myself into my head about how long it's going to take me to look at this and all this work I'm going to have to do. And I was disappointed because there was nothing to do. It was there, it was done. I knew what to say, I knew what to do. And that was it. And that, and I told Grace this afterwards, that that is something that I have seen quite a few times. That all of a sudden I have this wisdom and clarity. Sometimes I didn't know that I needed it or that I wanted it, but there it was. And I just had this second idea or this third idea about what I could be doing. And I got up and do it without thinking about it. Mm. And that's been the best thing that I have seen and done so many things just without thinking about it. Because when I have thought about it, nothing has actually happened. So I realized the less thinking I do, the better it is. And the more I just trust myself with that thinking, the better it is. Yeah, I love that, Beverly, because I, I think, and it's something that's quite hard sometimes for people to understand that, that actually sometimes in our coaching sessions, sometimes when, when we're in that um, need or that urgency mm. to get something done, um, very often, um, you know, it's, it's, in the, it's in the moving beyond the urgency that I notice my clients become efficient and know exactly what to do. Yeah, totally. So I love that. I love that. And, and Beverly, um, you know, can you share some sort of uh, results? People always ask me, well, what sort of results would I get if I was, you know, um, engaging with your coaching? Like what, what are some of the results that have been meaningful to you, apart from this huge, what I see as the biggest one being connected to our wisdom and actually taking action from there. But is there anything else that stands out for you? Oh as gosh. Results oriented? Yeah, um, I've secured two different contracts. 
both of which were for three months. The first one lasted for 18 months. The current one is now running for six months. I had no idea before I got them that I was going to get them. I, had, I didn't create them. I didn't say I want this role with this organization. Neither of them did I know about. Their location wasn't ideal. Yet when they arrived, they were the right thing for me. So the difference they have made both to my, you know, to my bank balance has been brilliant. So, and again, I think it's that clarity of just knowing that this is the right thing. Mm -hmm. I was doing all sorts of things, thinking that I needed to do this and I needed to do that. And yet when they both arrived, they were right. Yeah. Just right. Yeah. And I know when we recently spoke, Beverly, I was really happy to hear that you had hosted your first client intensive um, with, with a, a corporate client. So um, yes. what was, how did you feel about stepping into that compared to where you were before? I had always had this idea about intensives, but I had lots of doubts and thoughts that I couldn't do that. So I followed what I thought was the traditional coaching method of so many weeks or so many sessions. And I had no problem with that. But the thought around intensives kept coming. It kept coming. And, but I knew I didn't want to do a whole day. So I thought, well, do half a day. What would that look like? That would be three hours. And I decided it would either be face-to-face -face or it would be via Skype, but I'd make no further conditions other than that. And the client who showed up wasn't one of my clients originally. She didn't know me, but she'd been referred by another coaching client who was on my other program. Mm -hmm. And as soon as we spoke, and I talked about my other program, I still didn't actually offer her the intensive because I was still in my head of, oh, I'm not sure. Um, and I talked about the other one and I sort of casually mentioned the intensive. And she sees it and said, oh, yes, that'd be great because we could, she said, oh, I can do that straight away um, because she wanted to get going straight away. She didn't want to wait six weeks. Yeah. So I was like, oh, crap, we are doing an intensive. And also the three hours suited her fine because she'd just left her job. She was just about managing childcare between that and the nanny and the husband. So three hours was fine. We were talked about doing it on Skype, but then she lived in South London. I live in South London. And I wanted, because it was going to be my first one, to see what it would be like to do it face to face. So we did, and she, it wasn't far for her to get to, it wasn't far for me to get to, so we did that. And I had the best time. I know it wasn't my coaching session, it was her coaching session, but I had the best time. And I knew as soon as I started, because it was as if everything had lined up, that three hour coaching intensives were the way to go. Because yeah. not everybody wants to wait and sort of, work through six weeks or 12 weeks or three months or six months. They want something now that they can get to grips with now and start implementing straight away. We've had a quick conversation and she has already started doing the things that we talked about. So it wasn't a case of she went away and lay on her sofa and thought about it. She got into action because she got a boost and she also saw for herself things that she could be doing. So I don't think she's necessarily doing what I've told her to do or what we've discussed. But she's got some ideas, she's got some, and she's got impetus how, behind her. How did and it's it feel brilliant. To actually step into hosting that. Oh, it was fantastic, Grace. I was nervous, don't get me wrong, but I chose a venue that I knew I'd been to before. So I had no anxiety about what it would be like or what they would be like because I'd seen them in operation. And also, I thought, I'm, what could go wrong? There's mm -hmm. nothing that could go wrong unless the client decided not to show up. And I knew that wasn't going to be the case. So, and I just followed all my instincts. We'd got a structure, so she knew what sort of things we were going to talk about. But I was still guided by what happened on the day and what she said, what came up. So it wasn't a case of we must do this. It mm -hmm. merely provided a space that she knew we would operate in. Yes. But things did come up which were challenging, but we had to go there because it was part of the breakthroughs that she needed to make. And there was nothing on paper saying we will do six breakthroughs and there'll be this happening. Stuff just happened. And I That's saw, it. even mm -hmm. in those three hours, what a big difference it had made. And I was so excited after it. So, yeah, yeah, I love it. And, and also, it was, it's lovely to see you step into that, you know, um, given that you've also had your own intensives. Because, you know, Beverly and I have worked together in different ways from intensives <laughs> 
private coaching to to the retreat, which we'll we'll just talk about for a moment. But um, I think uh, the fact that you're offering intensives, the fact that you actually experienced one more than one for yourself at different times, um, is just it's just a beautiful affirmation of of sort of. Uh, giving out what you've taken in for yourself. So um, yeah. I'm sure that will remain a part of your model. Just to finish, Beverly, you know, um, part of why I'm sharing today is, is, to, is for people to also um, get an understanding of why you retreat, you know, why, um, why you work in that way. And you're, you're a client who's experienced lots of different ways to work with me, but you also, uh, if you remember back in, in 2015, mm -hmm came out to Italy on to our first retreat. And at that stage, I recall you were somewhat um, exploring the difference between coaching and consulting in your own life. Mm. And you also, um, you were really keen to get started serving clients. So what was your experience of the retreat and, and why would it be something you might encourage others to that might be sitting on the fence to, to, to get on a plane and come to Italy and do? I think the first thing is getting on a plane and leaving wherever you are because if you remember Grace when you first said about doing the retreat I was like oh I don't know and um, I'm not quite sure I can carve out the time and so I had lots of reasons why I couldn't go. I, wa I wanted to go but I felt the reasons I couldn't go were much stronger and, and real in whatever co concept of reality I was working, but they were real for me. And after we spoke, I came away and thought about it. And I spoke, to, I shared an office with somebody and I thought, I'll, I'll tell her about it. And I started to tell her about it. And I think it was just, just go. I just said, I don't know what your problem is, just go. Oh, crikey, that wasn't really how I saw this conversation going because I had this whole thing mapped out. So with that in mind, I had to go and see, I was working with the client at the time, so I had to go and see the client and say, Could I, I'm going to rearrange our time together. And I said to her, I have to go to Italy. And she said, Whereabouts do you have to go? And I told her, she goes, well, I understand why you have to go. And we both laughed. And that was the end of our conversation. And off I went. So I contacted Grace and said I should be coming and booked flights and there it was and there I was and having made the decision to go all of a sudden those reasons why I couldn't go were no longer real and then being there um gosh I arrived that night it was a beautiful vacation but as I said it was just the reality of just leaving it all behind and knowing I was going off to just have some time to myself to work on myself and to think about what I wanted to do next you can't, you can't measure that. And in the time we had there, we had coaching time and we had time for ourselves. And the other women I was there with, we had such a laugh, even when we were together, when we were separate, we had lots of WhatsAppings, even though we went, up in the, we went in the same room at the same time, we would WhatsApp, we would chat, but we also did things like have a massage and just sit and be still. And in that time, I did work out because I had this whole thing about coaching or consulting and what somehow they had to be separate. And then I realized actually they're not, they're one and the same thing. And also what's happened is now that I've realized that, I can't help but coach, whether not coaching as in formally, but I have a coaching manner. I know that. Um, so clients get the benefit of that one way or the other in the way that I ask questions, the way that I work with their staff. So that was a big revelation for me that I could just combine them. Yes, some people have separate businesses, but I knew that wasn't the thing that I wanted and I didn't want to think about things in that way. So for me, that, that was a big thing, but also just this being still. And I've been told before about being still and I didn't really understand it, but I got it then about being still. Mm -hmm. And in being still, stuff does happen. And sometimes nothing happens and then stuff does happen. Yeah. So it's not a case of if you do this, then this will happen and you'll see this great light. Sometimes it's quite an insignificant thing that happens, but the impact of that is not insignificant at all. It's quite the reverse. Yeah, yeah. And, here, you know, beautiful to see that here you are today working with clients in your way and not, not struggling with that issue anymore on coaching or consulting. No. Um, Beverly, was there any, like, 
one highlight or thing that stood out that just for those that might be considering coming, but they're like, oh, I'm not sure if I should get on the plane, even though it sounds great. Like, is there anything that you recall that was meaningful to you that stood out during our time in person together here in Italy? Well, if they've not worked with you before, they'll discover that you're a really easy person to work with. There isn't this rigid, we'll do this at this time and this at this time. There's a lot of laughing, there's a lot of fun. <laughs> There's also lots of coaching, yeah, exactly, as you're doing now. There's, also, there's all of that. Um, and I think if you can get off that merry-go-round, that whatever it is that you're on, and just allow yourself some time and some space. And it's not about I'm worth it, I deserve it, or any of those things. Just allow yourself some time and some space and see what happens. I didn't set an intention, I'd come out and I'd solve this or I'd solve that. I was just allowing myself a break from work, from home, from anything. I hadn't been to Italy in a long time. I had all sorts of issues about getting on a plane and going to Europe. I normally go to New York and yada, yada, yada. But I went and it was the best thing. It was the best thing. Yeah. And I think if you're sitting there wondering, shall I, shan't I? I say, yeah. Give it a go. Thank you, Beverly. For those of you that are listening and you're um, curious just about how we might work together or you're curious about the retreat in particular, um, you can click on the link below and um, set up, we can set up a call together and we can explore if it is the right fit for you to actually spend five days basking in this <laughs> fun and joy and coaching that really really supports you in moving forward with whatever direction you're working mm. on right now um you can apply on the link below or you can contact me directly uh in the meantime i would just say you know it's been just wonderful to witness you beverly and to see the growth and to see where you are today and, and just to watch how it's evolving and referrals are coming in, which in my opinion is the best form of business. Yeah. <laughs> Cuts out all the need to, to work really hard behind your computer. So whatever you're doing, you're doing right. And um, I wish you all the best and thanks for sharing your experience. You can find out more about Beverly on beverlybrownwell.com. Thank you very much, Grace. Thank you, darling. Bye, ciao. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.